Welcome back. Today, I'll be focusing on the calendar and assignments features of Canvas. So if that's something you need to learn, definitely stay here because I'm going to show you the tutorial so that you can do these things all on your own. So first, you'll see that I'm in my dashboard. Now I'm going to navigate to my calendar. And so after I'm here, you'll see a few things. You can see that I have my items. I can list them by the agenda. I can list it by the month if I want to see the month. Or maybe I want to do it one week at a time. But either way that you decide, all of the same items are still there as far as your, your appointments, your reminders, your assignments. They're all there. It just depends on the way that you want to view them. So as far as the calendars go, I can choose which calendars I want to see. And so if I don't need to see this calendar, I'm going to take it off if I don't need it. But then if it is a calendar that's a little more important, then I'm obviously going to keep that on there. And so as you can see, I removed my Canvas PD sandbox. Well, there's a lot of assignments in there, so I'm going to add that back so that I can keep track of all of my assignments that are coming up. And so another thing you can do as well is at the bottom here, you can go to calendar feed. And then with this, you can copy and then paste this link in to your Google Calendar. You can do it to Outlook, whatever calendar service you use. You can paste this in and then it'll, it will link those calendars together. So when you're on your phone, you don't have to go between the Canvas app and your, your calendar app because it's all going to be in the same place in the same calendar. So that's something that you might want to do if, um, if you have a calendar that you prefer. Another thing is that there are multiple ways to schedule events and reminders. So for example, for one thing I can do is double click. And when I double click in here, you'll see these, this is the events menu. I can schedule a basic event. I can schedule an assignment, something on my to-do list, or I can do an appointment group. Another way that I can schedule an event is by clicking the button here, create new event. And to do that, I'm just going to give my event a title, and then I'm going to choose the date, and maybe I want to choose the time as well. And so I'm going to put it at 12 p.m. until 2 p.m. And then I can add the location and add which calendar do I want to put this on. And you see the top bar, how it changed. That lets me know that it's on which calendar that I'm going to be putting it on. All right, and so another feature, I can go down here to more options, and this is going to allow me to be a little more detailed, a little more elaborate. And so for this event, let's say that it is um, um, math test. Maybe it's going to be a, a meeting. I can drop in a link here to Google Meet. Maybe to I want to do it to Zoom. Whatever I need, I can put it inside this section. And then, of course, I can schedule my time, location, address. But duplicate, this is if you want it to be a recurring meeting. And so if I need this to happen um, every three weeks, I can schedule to set this up for every three weeks, every three days or months. It's the frequency that I choose. And that when I'm finished, I'm going to create the event. And now it says it's saved successfully. So if I look on my calendar for that date, I will see right here on the 30th, I just scheduled math test. So now to go back to that, I'm going to add in another um, option here. I'm going to click assignment. Now you know there's another way, and there's another way to make assignments. There's multiple ways to make assignments. And so um, this is only one of the many ways. But I'll give it a title. I'll give it a due date. And then after I give it a due date, I'll decide which calendar is it going to go on. I'll put it on assignments and mastery pass. We'll leave it on that calendar. All right. And then you have an option of syncing it to PowerSchool. Now, when you're at home right now, you're trying to practice this, know that you are not going to be able to have everything published the same way that I am because you may not have any published current active courses. And so in August, whenever we get um, all of our official courses rolled out, then you'll be able to do assignments and everything from there. But for now, you're not really going to be able to um, assign things to people if you don't have anybody in your course, which you won't if it's a sandbox course. So just wanted to clarify that. Now, in the fall, whenever we do have our active live courses, 
you can sync it to PowerSchool and you can automatically go and publish this if you want. But for now, I'm in a sandbox, so I'm not, I don't need to do those things right now. I'm going to go down, and I recommend this for you as well, go down to more options. As you're in more options, this should look exactly like your assignments, the way that you're used to doing it from the assignments tab here. So I'm going to um, change this. I don't actually want it to be a math test. It's going to be Google Slides practice. And so, oh my goodness, practice. Practice. There we go. Google Slides practice. And I'm going to go here to more because this is the same toolbar that you've been using the whole time. Nothing different. But I'm going to go to my apps. And today I'm going to do a Google Slides scavenger hunt. And so that is located in my Google Drive. And so I'm going to select that file. There we go. And attach it. And then as soon as I have it attached, it's going to pop up for me right here. And I like the way this looks. So now I'm going to go down. I can make this however many points I want. Let's say I wanted to make it 50 points. All right. And then I, I don't want to count this assignment towards the final grade. And you get to choose how do you want your kids to submit it. Maybe you want them to do it on paper or online. Or maybe there's no submission. All right. But I want them to submit it online. And I want it to be text entry. So I'm going to leave that exactly the way it is. All right. Unlimited attempts. Or maybe you want to allow them to do it three times. It is completely your choice. And so when you get your course in the fall, you'll be able to go through and edit all of these settings on your own. So now as far as assigning goes, you can assign it to everyone in the class. Or you can choose a course to that you want to assign it to. Or you can assign it to people's um, people individually by clicking their name or typing their specific name in. And this is good for differentiation if you are going to um, have differentiated assignments. So I'm happy with what I wrote. I'm going to save it and publish it. And so now that that is saved and published, what happens is that um, I have my notification set so that people are able to get that notification that, hey, there's a new assignment, something changed, go check your calendar. So moving on, another thing I want to show you about, let's make this on the 30th, is your to-do list. And so in your to-do list, you are going to type in so if I need to do um, a practice update, for example, this is due on the 30th. If I want to put in the time, I can put in the time. If I want to do details, I can add in details, but I don't have to if I don't want to. And I'm actually going to put this in my personal calendar. So that way, because this is for me, it's not for my students. This one is actually for me. So I'm going to submit that. And then it'll pop up on my calendar. And remember that my calendar is this red color. And so if I want, I can actually change that to like a cerulean blue. Let's change it to blue. And so now you see all the blue. This is my specific things on my personal calendar. The last thing that I want to show you is appointment group. And you see how the bar is blue now? I can go to a different calendar and set that up if I want, but I'm actually gonna set this up in my sandbox, which is also purple, purple's my favorite color. But I'm gonna go to my appointment group and I'm gonna title this, um, let's see, weekly check-ins. And I'm gonna start that today and it's gonna be from, hmm, no, I'll start it tomorrow. Let's start it tomorrow. And it's going to be from bright and early 7 a.m. until, um, let's do 9 a.m. 7 a.m. until 9 a.m. And now this is the part where you get to decide how do you want this it to be specifically. So maybe you want to do this for just super quick and you only want to do 10-minute meetings. That's okay. You can do that. I'm going to do opt for 15-minute meetings. And so here I can meet with one person or I can spread this out over a certain amount of time. So I'm going to press go, and now you'll see that it populated for me on the, the 30th of this month. I have options here for meeting times, and people can come, and they can meet me. And so you can limit this to one person if you want, 
you can do it to however many people in your group. And so one idea is to use this time for group check-ins. If you have a group project, say, okay, I need all five members of the group to check in with me. And so sign up for a time. Here, by allowing the students to see who signed up, uh, they'll know that they're signing up within the right group time. And then this section, it limits them. So that way your group can only sign up one time. They don't need to sign up for three or four of your sessions unless you give them permission. And this calendar, I'm gonna put it on the Canvas PD sandbox. And of course, down at the bottom, there are details. You can add in details. Please be prepared to discuss your final project. And I'm going to publish this. And so after it's published, again, they are going to receive an email that shows that there's something new on the calendar. Go check it out. And so if I look here, it's kind of hard to see in week view. So I'm going to go to agenda view. And then you'll see here that I have weekly check-ins. There's five available because I selected to have five students at that check-in. So all they'll do, they'll come click this. They'll see my little note and they'll see which class it's for. And then if they want to add a comment, they can. They can add group, they can look at the group details, who is in this class, and then they'll click reserve. And then after they reserved it, it'll be on their calendar, and then it'll pop up on my end as well so that I get a notification to see who am I actually going to see on July 30th at 7 a.m. And so there isn't much more to it. That's it. The only other thing is find appointment. And so let's say that I emailed and said, hey, I noticed that you didn't sign up for your appointment yet. Can you please log into your calendar and sign up for an appointment? Then you'll click find appointment. And if your instructor has created a, an a option for appointments, it'll be here. These are the only courses that I have appointments created for. So then I'll click that course and I'll click submit. And then it's going to pop up that calendar to show me, okay, what is it that I need to do? And here I'll see that this one is reserved, so I can't select that anymore. So now that's everything you need to know about Canvas calendars. And so I hope that you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you. So if you like this video, definitely click like. Don't forget to subscribe so that that way you never miss another video. I have a lot more tutorials coming out as the school year starts. So enjoy.